Welcome, photographers of all ages, types, and levels of experience. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo. And the contents of this box are long-awaited, to say the least. You know, I really consider myself a portrait guy, at the very least, a human photographer. And for most people like me, they really like 85mm, and I do too. I love 85. The Nikkor Z8512 is a godsend. But... I do have a slight leaning towards preferring 135 millimeters. I've owned the 135s from the AIS. Um, I never owned the 135 F2 defocus image control lens, which, believe it or not, was the last 135 that Nikon made. And I knew that was going to be loud, but I never owned that lens, but I did get to shoot it. And it's, it's a wonderful lens. Although I am really, really glad that this lens does not have defocus image control because it's already Oh, 2,500 bucks. And if you go throwing fancy things in there, like defocus image control, uh, what is it? Three, 35, $4,000? I mean, who knows? But with that slight preference for 135 millimeter, I have been waiting on a Z mount 135 millimeter since before we knew that there was going to be a 135. Now, if you don't know by now, I'm all about output. What can it do? What can I do with it? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's not this video. I can't get anybody out to shoot right now. However, with the price of this lens and how big it is and, and everything else, I think it's important if you're considering getting this lens to separate the two anyway. Is it going to work for you because of its size and weight? Does it have the, the functionality that you will be looking for out of a lens like this? So for this video, we're just gonna check this out for the first time, but I encourage you to subscribe to the channel because literally the next time you see this, I'm gonna have a ton of images. Because believe me, 135, f1.8, that is right up my alley being a portrait guy. Getting into the box here, we have the instructions. I don't need that. Other contents in the box are these ridiculous pouches. Nikon, I love you, I love your glass, but um, you call these lens cases, they're not lens cases, these are pouches. You would get the same effect out of putting this lens in a tube sock if you happen to have, you know, um, quite large feet because it is a big lens. We have to see if we can turn this into an orthodox priest hat, and we absolutely can. This is old school Z-Wade photo stuff. Subscribe to the channel. We have a modest uh, lens hood here. Um, it is the regular fanfare. It's plastic, and it's not particularly hard plastic. I don't like that. Nikon for $2,500, you could do something a little tougher feeling. The packaging is absolutely exceptional. There's absolutely no movement in there. That is a nice fit. First things first, this lens feels Incredible. This feels more metallic than most other Z lenses. I have to compare it to the 85 millimeter f1.2. So here's what I can tell you right off the bat. The 85 is heftier, it's bigger, but this Plena uh, somehow feels better made. And I think that somehow is because on the 85, you have a metal lens mount, of course, and then you have metal here, and then it turns into plastic pretty much the rest of the way. On this one, the jury's out. I believe this is, this has to be metal right here. It's not magnetic, I tried. Yeah, so you have more metal on this. I just did the tooth test. <laughs> so you have metal on the lens mount, of course. You have metal here. You have metal here, and then it turns into plastic. And so in the hand, the Plena, it, it does feel better made, and I like that. I, I, I wish Nikon would incorporate more metal on the lenses, and it doesn't feel like it's, sacrificing, you know, a lighter weight feels great. The manual focus ring feels fantastic. I mean, it's, it's right on par, maybe a little bit smoother than the 85. For anybody that is wondering about the price difference between the two, this currently, as far as just the construction goes, feels like it should be the price of this and this should be the price of this. Let's get a look at this front element here. I'll show the camera first. Oh my God, it's massive. It's really close in size to the 85 millimeter F1.2 front lens element. I just love like the deep gaping hole <laughs> of a monster piece of glass with that front element. Oh, I love it. Excellent. Just like with the 85 millimeter F1.2, we do not have a top screen right here that shows you the focal lengths. And I'm okay with that. It's an added cost and Honestly, I'm wondering if maybe Nikon is just kind of like done with it. If they're just like, eh, nobody really cares about it. I thought it, it looks cool. It looks techy, but I don't know that enough people care about it 
you know, for it to be incorporated into every single, you know, high-end lens. This front ring here, of course, does absolutely nothing. It's just like a grip. Looks good, nice and clean. It is a brand new lens, and so I don't expect there to be anything wrong with it, but you never know. Front element is just clean and huge. I love it. So I've got the Nikon Z9 recording me, but it only makes sense to see what this feels like on a smaller mirrorless camera and, uh, the Z8. So this is a Z5, and this body style is the Z5, the Z6, 62, 7, 72. It's this particular uh, size of body. It feels pretty front heavy if you're holding it one handed, like this here. Feels totally fine with your hand up to it. It doesn't feel too incredibly sloppy. Although on the Z5, I will say the machining tolerances could be better. Uh, I would expect them to be better. We'll find out here in a second if that is the lens mount or if that is the Z5 whenever I grab the Z8 right now. It is sloppier on the Z5 than it is the Z8, but there is a little bit, a little bit of give. You don't have to worry about light leakage or anything like that, but the point still stands. Some, you know, constructive criticism for Nikon. Uh, tighten up your machining tolerance. That's shit. <laughs> Anytime you have like a $4,000 camera and then like a two and a half thousand dollar lens, it needs to be snug. If you can't get that right, what are you doing? Love you though. It feels even better on the Z8 being a bulkier body. Uh, it just, it fits more comfortably. It doesn't feel as front heavy. Feels excellent. These two here, Z8, Z9 portrait monsters, a absolutely perfect pairing for the Nikkor Z135 F 1.8 S Plena. Overall, I'm really, really glad that Nikon did a little bit more on the construction side of things, incorporating a little more metal, feels colder to the touch, and it just, it gives you a little bit more confidence whenever you have just a little bit more metal. I'm that guy that would literally take a full metal lens because I don't care about weight. This feels like a good compromise because I really don't feel like we're sacrificing on the weight for the people that are concerned about weight. And it, it just, it still has that, I mean, that's right where I put my fingers, right on metal. And so I appreciate that, Nikon. I'm really, really glad that you threw that in there. Construction, size, weight, sexiness. I love having that plena right there where I can see it, right? Because I'm, I'm proud to have this particular lens. I've been waiting on it. I love 135s, and that's just like a reminder right there on the metal that it's like you have something special. You have a, an exotic, and that exotic is just like staring you in the face. Now is an excellent time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification because the next time that the Nikkor Z 135mm f 1.8s makes an appearance on this channel, it is coming with all the fun stuff. Like pictures of brick walls. <laughs> I'm kidding you pixel peeping freaks. What we are going to look at is the output, the color, the sharpness. Does it deliver on all the things that Nikon promised that it would deliver on? You're just going to have to stick around and find out. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo. Stay sharp, YouTube.